With memories of a thrilling Collins Cup still fresh in the mind, many of the world's finest triathletes gathered to compete for prize money, totaling $1 million and the honor of being crowned PTO US Open champion for 2022. Hello and welcome to Dallas, Texas for the inaugural US Open, part of the PTO series of middle distance races made up of a 2K swim, 80K on the bike and an 18 kilometer foot race to finish things off. Coming up later on in the program, we'll see if local hero Sam Long could step up to the plate on home soil as he faced stiff competition from the likes of European 70.3 champion Daniel Backegaard, the ever dangerous Lionel Sanders and an informed Magnus Ditlap. But first, we concentrate on the women's race and a lineup that included Lucy Charles Barkley, fresh from her recent victory in Bratislava, Olympic and Commonwealth champion Flora Duffy, and PTO Canadian Open winner Ashley Gentle. Your race commentators, Vicky Holland and John Gooden. Take, Take your, your mark. And there they go. We are racing. The First tour US event Open. in the US for the PTO. So a very special Royal weekend for everyone involved, wherever we find you in the world. Thank you for your company. My name is John Gooden, alongside multi-time Olympian, former world champion Vicky Holland. We've got a good one. Live from the Lone Star States, our elite women are already surging towards that million dollar prize purse, PTO points and bragging rights as well, Vicky. Yeah, it's really great to be back here with PTO again. Already seeing some spreading out in the women's field. Well, no Karen, surprise at all to see Lucy Charles Barkley in that blue suit and the in. silver cap starting to stretch things out Can from this side of the pontoon. So interesting to see if anyone could go with her today yeah. or whether she's going to spend a lot of time solo. So Taylor Nib is hanging on to the feet of Lucy Charles Barkley as they head down towards the turn which is about 450-ish meters I believe okay. <laughs> and a gradual bend to uh, then come back yeah so it looks like these two have Broken put away. some distance in now on Sarah Perez Salah so she was just holding on to those toes but hasn't been able to hold on there and we did mention Flora Duffy but it seems like due to the start position she had she struggled to get across and get herself onto the feet of these two Edmonton was an incredible race, but we have more superstars on the start line for today, Vicky. Of course, we've got like four really big names with Lucy Charles Barkley coming back, Taylor Nib, and all of these ladies right here are chasing those two right now. But of course, Ashley Gentle is kind of like the tour reigning champion, if you like. She's seeing so much success at this distance. She has, and right next to her, you can see in the white cap, that's Paula Finlay. Right. So these two athletes, first and second at the Edmonton Canadian Open earlier this year. On top of that, they both won their matchups at Collins Cup. Paula Finlay has won the inaugural PTO Championship in Daytona in 2020. And of course, um, Ashley has won every race she's done over this distance this year. So really, those two athletes are two that we're going to be focusing on heavily through the day, and we do expect to see them near the front of the racing. Well, here they emerge. <laughs> this is a very spectator-friendly course here in Dallas, Texas, in Irving. See already lots of people out there to cheer on their favorite triathletes these elite women you've got to be a little bit careful there or it's a looked a bit slippy didn't it didn't it just what i thought was interesting there is it's the first time we can properly glimpse that lucy charles barkley is not wearing 
uh, what we call a swim skin, a right. suit over the top of her race suit. She has gone with just her race suit. Now that is a really smart tactic, I think, for someone who is of the swim caliber that Lucy is. She doesn't need that extra layer. We can see all these athletes coming through here now. I think that was Lottie Wilms. We've got some of our other top athletes, actually gentle in that green cap there. You can see they're wearing suits over the top of their normal race suit. That's because they add a little bit of buoyancy to them as they swim. It's sort of a halfway house between wearing a wetsuit and just yes. wearing your race suit. Well, these two ladies have extended the gap to about 52 seconds now. And they can probably see the swim e exits coming up fast. It's a good aerial shot there of our transition zone, the athletes. Yeah. It's a one-way flow through the zone. So it's, it's good run, a good distance of running still that they'll have to do as they'll run all the way down the red carpet, snake back on themselves to come through the transition zone where they'll collect their bikes. Obviously, Taylor Nibb's going to have to take her race skin off and put her suit on fully. Then they'll take their bike to the mount line. We've got a green mount line. They can't get on their bikes until they've gone over that mount line or they will incur a penalty for doing so and then they head out onto this 80 kilometer bike loop can we just say how great it is to have both lucy charles barkley and taylor nib racing once again for the pto particularly charles barkley that for those that don't know she was given some news that it was a potentially career ending injury to her hip it was a stress fracture but she defied all the odds she wasn't expected to be back this season she's already gotten a win under her belt in shamarin in august she she wasn't part of that wasn't that wasn't under the pto banner but she's here with us in dallas everything's a bonus at this point and, and we're we're here for it yeah we are just as uh, we see taylor nib do exactly as we spoke about she's had to unravel her race suit there and put that on as she runs through transition so lucy is stealing a bit of a march on her here but we did expect that given we knew that lucy had her suit on absolutely ready to rumble with no race skin to, to have to deal with but lucy spoke about in the press conference the injury that she's had this uh, stress fracture to the femoral uh, head i believe it was in her hip and she was told that if she didn't deal with it appropriately at that time then that could cause her issue and she might not come back to racing and she took that on incredibly seriously and in absolute classic Lucy Charles Barclay fashion she's done everything meticulously she's used it as an opportunity to rebuild herself stronger and she even said if she had a time again she would take the injury knowing that she's come out of it as a better athlete yes she said that the comeback is stronger than the setback and she's already out on the bike course she will be powering through this, the seven loops that we have here on the bike leg. Not a lot of elevation, if any, it's a little bit undulating from what we understand. Yeah. A couple of turns. Do you think any of that's, it's not a technical course, is it, until you come back through the flow through transition area? No, absolutely not. Straight out and back, uh, 11 and a bit kilometers, seven laps. And this here is Holly Lawrence in her red, in a sort of distinctive red suit. Also, Ashley Gentle there, all still together, we see as they come out the water. So that pack didn't split up on the second lap. And just as Ashley was taking her bike there in that light green suit, that is Paula Finlay. So she's also still in that pack. I think that's Fenella Language I can see going through there as well. So this pack didn't split up at all, really, on lap two of the swim. They still they stayed together in there. They're, they're going to be a big pack heading out onto this 80 kilometre bike loop together. Yeah, that, that, that pack was about a minute down from Taylor Nib. Yeah, that's right. They're still about a minute down. That's I think some of them will actually be quite pleased with that. I think the likes of Ashley Gentle will be really pleased to put it together. Yet another solid swim, as she did at the Canadian Open in Edmonton earlier this year. She spoke in her interview afterwards about that was possibly the most pleasing part of her race, that she was able to come back with such a fantastic swim, someone who's raced short course for years, but often struggled to put together the swim performances that she needed to stay in the racing. And she was able to do that in Canada earlier this year. She was delighted with that performance and she's done it again here today, coming out of the water just a minute down on the likes of Lucy Charles Barkley. I think it's a really good result for Ashley Gentle. Just a little bit of housekeeping then. So obviously an 80 kilometer course, seven laps. It's about 11.45 kilometers. Now there is a lap counting screen that the athletes will see to keep track of how many laps they've actually completed. And as we were talking about, a little bit of technical riding at the 
the, uh, the extents of the loop, if you will, and it is a non-draft race, so there's a 20 metre draft zone. Now, there will be a little bit of leniency applied on the turns and tight areas, but if an athlete decides they want to pass on the left, then they have 45 seconds in which to do so. And you can talk about this a little bit more, please, Vicky. Athletes can get lapped out on this course. Yeah, that's something that we brought in new for this race. It wasn't the case in Edmonton, although in Edmonton the laps were considerably longer. We've got seven laps here today, and to keep the race as clean as possible, you can be lapped out on this race today. So if you were to be caught by the leading cyclist, you would be asked to move to the side and you'd pull off the course at the first moment after that. And that just keeps things a little bit cleaner, I think, on the race course and a bit safer for all the athletes. So we see that the gap is closing just before they hit the turn. It was about seven seconds. Four seconds has been knocked off of that by Taylor Nib of the USA. Yeah, so the athletes here know that they need to maintain a 20 meter draft zone. They can't go into that draft zone unless they are going to overtake the athlete in front. They can't go into that draft zone and then drop back out of it. Once into it, they do have to proceed with the pass. And they were asking yesterday in the briefing whether there was any markings that could help them to sort of understand exactly what that 20 meter draft zone would look like. And you can see the white lines on the road. We've been told that a space, a a white line and a space constitutes 20 meters. So they've got that. You can see it beautifully oh, there from the that pass. aerial shot. As Taylor Nib flies by Lucy Charles, she didn't need the full 45 seconds. She's absolutely blitzed by her there. And wow. she's undoubtedly put a surge in so that she can get round. It's now Lucy Charles Barclay's job to drop out of that 20 meter draft zone, also within the 45 seconds. But right now, that doesn't look like a problem the way that Taylor Nib's riding. Well, not a surprise. Paula Finley, we know her time trial abilities. No question that she is a very strong woman. Behind her, Holly Lawrence, Flora Duffy, Lisa Norden has moved herself up into that top six. So some very established women who have some world-class performances at both short and longer distance racing. All alone at the front, however, it's the one of the youngest women in the field at just 24 years of age, Taylor Nib from the US continuing to put a large gap into the rest of the women. We look to the top side and it's now Holly Lawrence having taken over Paula Finley, so she might be getting some feedback that they are continuing to lose time to both Lucy Charles Barkley as well as the young Taylor Nib. An interesting point, Barry, that you brought there. That's the only problem when you are in a, in a group this large they need to work together legally. We know it's 20 meter rule here, but they still need to work together legally to keep that pace on because they don't want to be getting splits where they are losing time to Taylor Nib up front. Well, when you talk about hydration, you can look at the back seat there behind Lucy Charles Barkley and there is no water bottle. That is a scary thing when you have, you know, well into the 30s, deep humidity, the knowledge that you've got a very, and there goes the water bottle right there. And that, uh, you know, we've seen it at a number of long distance races, really throw off athletes. They've lost some of their nutrition. They start to panic a bit. They don't have all the fluid that they had anticipated, particularly a bottle. And, you know, is this one of the things of having not raced a lot for her that maybe her equipment isn't even 100% of what she's normal because she really hasn't had many events this year. Lucy saw that rear bottle go, so I'll be I'll be very interested to see if it's actually something that's worrying her because she's going to know I've just lost one of my bottles, my hydration. Hydration today is going to be absolute key. She's going to have to make sure that when she goes through that next aid station that she does collect another bottle. Now there's four athletes behind Lucy and they're looking really, there's some huge paychecks at the end of the day. Who would you be most concerned of if you were Lucy Charles Barkley looking behind with that group of four? Oh, well, that, that, that foursome behind her, so, the, you know, the likes of Holly Lawrence, Paula Finlay, Flora Duffy, all of the above, can I say? Lucy Charles Barkley on screen now that she has been given that bottle. She's struggling, though. You can see it's on a she weird is struggling. angle. It yeah. is on a weird angle. And look, she's really struggling to get it in. Yeah. And this is when a little bit of a uh, race 
you know, not, not having raced for quite some time. And she's even had to stop pedaling there. So she just cannot get that rear bottle in. And to have to stop pedaling, then she's going to lose speed. Yeah. That, that is, uh, that's, that's equipment not uh, giving you the help you need. She's trying to take the fluid. And I wouldn't be surprised if she just throws that bottle at some point. But, you know, she's going to have to watch that because there's penalties if you do. Exactly, Barry. She can't just throw it on the sidewalk there. She'll have to wait till she gets to that aid station before she's able to dispose of that bottle. And she can either put it in between her arms down on the error bars or slip it down the front of her of her race suit. Uh, I've done that plenty of times before when I've had the same sort of issues. But look at Paula Finlay right now, and this is exactly what I was talking about before. This is exactly what we need from these women if they have any chance to chase down Taylor Nib. They need to start working together. And great to see Paula Finlay, who we know is one of the strongest cyclists out there today take the lead off Holly Lawrence. Holly Lawrence will now be thinking well thank you very very much it gives me a little bit of a breathing time as Paula Finlay one of the strongest bike riders out there takes the lead today. Jessie Lucy Charles has dropped another bottle there that is the second bottle we've seen her lose during the race today. We did get that replay a little while ago of that bottle bouncing out that rear bottle cage early on on the bike. We believe that that footage was from within the first couple of kilometers on the bike. So to lose a bottle with, we don't know whether it's just water or nutrition's in there as well, but whichever way to lose fluids and in these temperatures so early on on the bike would have been definitely not part of the plan for Lucy Charles Barkley. The water, 27, 28 degrees Celsius. We had a huge group earlier this morning of age group athletes, and they all are standing around to watch these superstars. 24-year-old the Taylor Nib came out on the feet of the more experienced 29-year-old from Great Britain, but it was not long before Taylor Nib started to pull away from even people like the Olympic Games gold medalist. Two laps down, three to go for Taylor Nib, and this would be a huge day for US triathlon to have a home victory because uh, the sport was started in the United States in the 70s and dominated through the 80s, but the world has caught up. And to see young Taylor Nib having a chance to win at home, you can see the shirts off, that's the cheer here that got started by our Norwegian guys a couple of uh, months ago. Well, Taylor Nib continuing to just execute an absolutely fantastic race, and you you really are surprised at that young age. I mean, obviously, Coach Ian O'Brien has done a fantastic job of making sure she was ready to come back from injury. Oh, and she's showing experience well, well above her young years right now. But looking at Lucy Charles Buckley, she looks like she's settled into a really nice rhythm. She looked a little bit uncomfortable when we saw her previously and, and look at this this is really interesting looking at taylor nib she's realized i need to slow down now through this aid station we know there are two aid stations out on the run course so two for every loop and she made sure i've got a long a, a big lead i can afford to slow down get as much hydration in as i needed and now she's picking it back up and she's straight back to speed already well, the woman in the red right there is from Canada. It's Tamara Jewett, who has twice run 74 minutes for the half marathon off the bike. And I can see Tamara going with her as well. The two of them, really, they probably are going to have the two fastest runs of the day, are going to be side by side. That will work to their benefit to go after Charles Barkley. Now, the Canadian is down a lap, but she's a phenomenal runner. We're looking at our 29-year-old from the UK. She is led through the swim. Got passed uh, early on on the bike course, had some incredible challenges, two or three times trying to get her water bottle in, didn't get enough calories. You have to wonder whether that's playing a bit into this factor. Two laps to go. That was the message on the board for Taylor Nib. She is closing in on that big prize purse. She's got some very excited supporters there. I love it. With the tops off. This is something we saw first in uh, Edmonton earlier this year with the Norwegian boys taking their tops off to cheer on the girls and then the girls return the favor the next day. We saw it again at the Collins Cup and it's nice to see that that's now become a bit of a PTO tradition. Vicky, look at this. We have a pack of three and there's the pass. 
Ashley Gentle has passed Lucy Charles Barkley with her friend Tamara Jewett <laughs> as well. Tamara Jewett, sorry. She did it as well. If you notice, she was right behind Lucy. She surged and moved right onto the other side of the of the uh, the run course there. So, meaning that if if she, if Lucy wanted any chance of going with it, Lucy had to move as well. I think Lucy's very much accepting that Ashley Gentle's running a completely different pace to her at this point, and that the podium is still very much a possibility for Lucy Charles Barkley. But she has to run her own race. She knows that Ashley is running a completely different speed to her right now, and it wouldn't be appropriate for her to try and up her pace to that level. It would probably end in disaster within a kilometre or two. So Lucy just running her own race, which is absolutely what she needs to do right now. Oh, that is... That is she coming apart a little bit? She's still got a huge amount of time. She's got three minutes, but this is this is absolutely critical. Did, Taylor was there a little to, shake of her head? There's a little shake of her yeah, head. Yeah, Taylor, you know, we saw her walk through an aid station about a lap ago. And at that point, I actually wasn't worried. I thought that was a smart move so she could take on more fluids and more nutrition. Well, that changes the dynamic of the race. We need to see the severity of the issue that Taylor Nib has. She's back running. So she took about, I think that was about 30 seconds there, she took just of walking along. So there's no doubt that that will have dented her lead to Ashley Gentle. She's only got six kilometers to go, but that's that's a long way to go if you're really feeling in trouble and if you're feeling that your, yes. your body's beginning to shut down on you. We're gonna see a camera angle, I am sure, soon enough where we can see that Ashley has Taylor in her sights. Well, there you go. She's just come into shot. She can see Taylor Nib rounding that corner in front of her. And I don't think it would be premature to say that right now the smart person's money is on Ashley Gentle to take the win. Ashley Gentle has been running down the rest of the field ever since she dismounted the bike. She has that number one lead spot in her sights right now. She's eaten away at the 14 seconds that you have on your screen right now. And this is going to be a real moment. We're going to see the pass any second now, aren't we? I don't know whether Ashley Gentle would have really believed that she could do that when she went in off, when she came off the bike, sorry, today. And she was six minutes, nearly She's gone, seven. she's through. She's passed, nearly seven minutes she's taken out of Taylor Nib on this Unbelievable. run. Unbelievable. Just looking back over the split, six minutes and 54 seconds behind Taylor Nib off the bike she was earlier today and she's taken the lead with a couple of kilometers to spare. Watch this. So much talk of how everyone would hold up in the heat as we see Lucy Charles Barkley trying to cool off as she strides to maintain her pace and that third spot on the podium as well. There's the smile. Now she's taking it all in. She's going to be five minutes quicker than all the others in the top ten. What a moment. Ashley Gentle has done it again. The emotion is going to start pouring through. She is the winner of the PTO US Open. Congratulations to there Australia's <laughs> Ashley Gentle. Fantastic work. Taylor Nib bringing it home for her team and also Team USA, if you like, racing at home. She takes the second spot. It is still a big bumper payday for Taylor Nib, who really led this race so expertly. She comes over the line. It's going to be an emotional day for her as well. I'm really happy to see the smile across Lucy Charles Barkley's face because it's been a tough race, but let's not forget she wasn't supposed to be here at this stage of the season. She was still supposed to be sidelined, but she is just about to cross the line in third place here at the PTO US Open. Congratulations to Lucy Charles Barkley. It's been a really good year. Um, it's been a lot of fun. I've definitely been enjoying the sport again, and thanks to the PTO for putting this on, giving us triathletes the opportunity uh, to race these world-class events against world-class athletes 
Um, yeah, it's an absolute privilege to be here and I'm just, yeah, absolutely, yeah, I'm in shock. <laughs> Confirmation then of the result and another outstanding performance from Ashley Gentle earns the Australian another W in this PTO series. That gutsy display from Taylor Nib would certainly have pleased the home crowd and despite those setbacks on the bike, Lucy Charles Barkley followed up her win in Bratislava with a place on the podium. Next up it's the men's race and you do not want to miss this one, we'll see you shortly. Ashley Gentle then taking control of this distance, another victory here adding to her success in Edmonton and at the Collins Cup. Now in the blistering Dallas sunshine, it was time for the men to feel the heat. Take your mark. Well, we are in for, I think, a day of absolute carnage when you start off in a hot bathtub for two kilometers, Belinda, and then you start to uh, do an 80 kilometer bike ride and an 18 kilometer run, all in almost 100 degrees somebody's going to be overzealous and make some mistakes. Oh, absolutely. We spoke about that. And I think the person who said it best was Lionel Sanders when he said, this is going to be just as much of a chess match as it is a race. And I could not agree with him more. I think the experience here is going to play a huge part. I know walking down, I had a 10 minute walk from the hotel down to the race venue here. And I'm from Noosa. I'm from the Sunshine Coast. I'm used to warm, hot, humid weather. But Oh, I couldn't believe how warm it was out there today. Right there, taking a look at Sam Laidlow, who is not uh, a surprise to see him near the front. We will recognize a few athletes in different color caps. Right there's the pink, and that is Daniel Beckengard just behind him. You can see how warm it is out there, 34 Celsius. And for those watching in the U.S., that's very close to 100 degrees by the time you add in humidity. And we saw some age groupers coming back who raced three hours ago looking tough. Well, we did expect Aaron Royal to be leading today, but after talking to him at breakfast, he said, what would be the point of me breaking away and exiting T1 uh, out front? He said, I'm gonna just take it in my stride, back it off just that little that smidgen, and it will mean that we ha will have a big group of men coming out of the water together after lap one, which you can see right now, really, there's a spearhead at the beginning, but then we've got a large group of men all swimming together. If I told you it was a Norwegian at the front of a race, would you be surprised? Uh, one of the youngest athletes in the race, just 23 years of age, torn from Norway. And uh, the Norwegian athletes obviously have just been on a roll over the last couple of seasons, but particularly the last 12 months. Well, it's funny, you know, obviously in Edmonton, we had the two, the two Norwegians, the two big dogs of Norway racing. They are not here today. So Christian Blumenfeld and Gustav Eden are not racing today. But in return, we have got Kasper Stornis and Vetla Torn. Vetla Torn leading the way right now. Interestingly enough with, with Vetla Torn, he's never raced over this distance. In fact, he's never raced over Olympic distance before. So he is going to be our least experienced uh, racing today over uh, this distance. I'm sure he has raced in these sorts of conditions before, but it's going to be interesting to see how he fares with the, the longer uh, efforts in, it's going to require in the bike and run. Well, that is Aaron Royal. So the class swimmer coming back towards the front end of this field. He won his event at the Collins Cup. He had to beg to get into the Canadian Open and got the bronze medal there. So we know that Aaron Royal, when you look at 99%, the only time I ever saw 99% is when you added all my marks up, uh, but that man is a stud swimmer and a two-time Olympian as well. So we know he's got the complete package. Said he's got one more race after this. That's a 70.3 world. So I know he's still focused on racing at a high level. The Norwegian Thorn just behind him to the left of Thorn is laid low. And then you can see in the, the uh, pink cap was Daniel Beckgaard as well, Tom Bishop. So big names, the people that we anticipated being up there. I haven't seen Ben Knut yet, the U.S. star, but I would anticipate he's probably within less than 15 or 20 seconds. And I'll also be really interested to see where Josh Amberger is. Of course, he is coming off a high after seeing his fiance take the win yesterday, Ashley Gentle. He was down on the finish line. But you can see the pink cap of Daniel Beckgaard there. So he is in an absolutely perfect position right now. I called it early, early and said that he is my favorite to take the win here today. And the reason being, he hasn't raced too hard. He hasn't raced too much this year. He's an all-round athlete. He's so strong over swim, bike, and run. 
and he just seems to be coming in with this quiet confidence and you you could see from the interview that we saw earlier with Abby he's just you can see he's relaxed but he's also extremely focused the men have had an advantage of watching that women's race play out yesterday and got the opportunity to see just how tough those conditions are so I think they've just decided instead of going into that next gear we're just going to back it off particularly for this first lap and you'll see as they come out now they have to exit up those stairs they will turn hard left run around I think it's 20 to 30 meters down to the pontoon they do have the opportunity here to take a drink so let's have a look it'll be very interesting to see if any of these athletes do choose to take a drink you can see they are they learnt, they've learnt from yesterday where they saw Lucy Charles Barclay take a drink really really smart racing from these men so far well, that looks like Ben Canute based on our information you can see Thorne in there Emberger not too far back so not surprised to see that great swimmer in that Smith a little further back than I would have anticipated and as we take a look less than 20 seconds in the top 20 plus men Fred Funk, the youngster from Germany, 23 seconds down. And the real question will be where is the combination of uh, Lionel Sanders and Sam Long? Really, really solid swim so far from Magnus Ditlev. As you can see him on screen right now, go past being in that group with Frederick Funk. He'll be very, very happy with where he is at the swim right now. Now, if we see a time of roughly a minute for Sam and Lionel, that is not a bad time to gap because they were two minutes down after, you know, halfway through in the Edmonton race. Saw so Keenly right there. He's back by 43 seconds and at 38 years of age, coming to most of his end of his career and what an illustrious career he's had. Well, we're not sure if our screen is going to be picking up Sanders and Long or they just have not had the swim, but I anticipate there they are, 111 back. So you can see there's a bit of time that's got to be made up. Sanders one minute down. There he is there right he is. there. So he'll be happy with that. You know, if, you, if, you're a, if you're a Lionel Sanders fan, you might say, why? I wish he was closer, but he's at least 50% faster than he was compared to the last swim in Edmonton. Well, as you take a look, as we come up to the 21 minute mark, we're going to be about 26 out of the water. So another 400 plus uh, meters to go before they get back to shore. It is now back to laid low, leading out there, but just behind Aaron Royal. And as you take a look through, Becca Gard is in that top bunch. Thomas uh, Bishop in there as well. The young uh, Swedish athlete is in that group. And really now it is not the breakaway gap that we have seen Belinda in some of these big events. No, that's right. And looking now, you can already see separation has started to occur. And we've got specific groups now. We've still got a really, really large lead group, which, you know, we didn't. I, I actually thought that this would split into two groups. So I'm quite surprised that we still have this really large lead group. We can see some of those colored caps there. So we know that that pink cap is Daniel Backergaard. We know the red cap is Aaron Royal. That is Lionel Sanders right there. Nothing on the sleeves. The silver cap, the man who grew up in a small town of Harrow, Ontario. That's just outside of Windsor, Detroit area. And uh, he has now made Tucson, Arizona his home. His wife Erin here watching and their first baby is due in about another two months. So he said, uh, this is the last two months before my life changes. Well, they're coming to the end of the swim. This time would be bang on virtually with Lucy. Charles Barkley yesterday. So just to give you a sense, the guys have certainly made sure they've stayed under control. That's Aaron Royal first out of the water. Sam Laidlow right there. As we're watching our athletes making their way through, the pink cap just coming out. That is Daniel Beckegaard is in that bunch. Any surprises for you, Belinda? Not so far, but this is a big group and I'll be very, very interested to see who's on the back of this group, who has been able to manage to just stay on the back. So we've got Ben Canute, Aaron Royal, Sam Laidlow. These are all the usual players. These are the men that we know. Daniel Backergaard, we know that they are very strong swimmers. Josh Amberger there just coming through. This is a huge group, but you can see now where transition is going to be crucial because if these men are able to get just a little bit of a gap, we may see a split, but really, really big lead group. We heard that even Sebastian Kinley has been able to stay right on the back of this group. That's a fantastic swim from Sebastian Kinley if he, he has been able to stay there. Great shot there of Daniel Backergaard. Not such a good transition for him, but a phenomenal one for Ben Canute. You can see his ITU background, no question about it. 
as these athletes have to push their bike up to the mount line and a large group of men now all coming out pretty close together. At least the top 12 to 15 are within seconds. And you can see this is typical Ben Knut style. He always is able to get through transition T1 and T2 so, so quickly. And the advantage he gets now is he gets to get comfortable, make sure that his helmet's where it needs to be, shoes done up properly, and he gets a little bit of a leeway before that group comes through and catches him. So smart move from uh, Ben Knut. Still not see the big bikers. Uh, when I say the big bikers, that is a combination of Long and uh, Lionel Sanders still have not come out of the water. Although we did just see then uh, the, the big, uh, the form of Christian Hugenhaug. He is a very strong cyclist, rides for B on the BMC bike, so he was in the red suit. There's Sanders. Here we go, there's Lionel Sanders right now. So Sam Long will be coming out of that water within there. <laughs> there he is. They have a string, I think they have, uh, in their contract, they must be within <laughs> 11 meters the entire day, so. So there you can see Sanders trying to get out of his speed suit. And uh, I didn't notice, but were there any athletes that did not swim in some type of a speed suit today, Belinda? Not that I've seen so far. All of the men look like they've had speed suits on. Now Sanders certainly not renowned for his transition, so he could probably give it up a couple more seconds as the athletes come through here. And they must put all of their equipment into the basket as we'll hopefully get a bit of a time gap here back to Sanders into Long. 29 minutes for Lionel Sanders, so uh, he's got the new haircut there, clean and looking. I think back a guard shaved himself, uh, had a nice uh, clean face when I saw him coming out of the water. So these guys might, uh, they're not hockey players because hockey players, Michael Johnson, do not shave until the playoffs are over. <laughs> um, do you think any of these guys, uh, you know, are, are taking it easy? Did they take it easy a little bit in the water based on the heat and what they saw yesterday? Absolutely, they did. We've already seen that the, the, our lead swimmers swam about the same time as Lucy Charles Barclay did yesterday. Now, we know Lucy Charles Barclay's the greatest swimmer in long distance uh, triathlon, but normally these men would swim faster than her, generally speaking. So just the fact that they've come out in a very similar time tells us that they've taken note from yesterday's race and they're playing it smart. Now, just a reminder, it is seven laps on this bike course, and uh, it's pretty much out and back, and a little tiny elevation at a small park at the far end of the course, but for all intents and purposes, really, it is straight out, straight back, roughly 11 kilometers, seven times through that. They come right through the transition zone every time, so there is just a little bit of technical riding they have to worry about, but uh, it really is, you know, this works now to the big bikers that can put that big power out. Well, one lap in, they still have six laps to go across the red carpet. And they've, uh, Aaron Royal just going through there. We can hear the commentary in the backdrop, but you can see right there a long train of nine or 10 men now. And they do give them a the little bit of the uh, opportunity as they're coming through the transition zone to get themselves back to that 10, 20 meter gap. And right on the back there, that's Pablo de Pina from Spain. So great to see Pablo up there in that lead group. looking back at some of the pictures from the swim and that's how a lot of people felt yesterday as Sam Laidlow was getting ready for the swim. They all lined up in the heat and got away well. And of course, whoa, we, now we mentioned this yesterday, didn't we, that it was a little bit slippery there, lots of twists and turns, and not sure who came a cropper there, but not ideal. Skittles there on the on the Aussie exit. Very early to have that happen to you in the race, as we look at Aaron Royal, that was, who led out that swim. And once again, Sam Long has made another pass. It's that man moving his way through the field again. And I don't think it's going to be too long before we do see him approach the very, very front of the race. He's he's not waiting around for anyone. I'd be very interested to see where he's at in relation to Lionel Sanders, as we know those two have been so similar across the board, swim, bike and run in many races they've done over the last year or two. So I can't imagine Lionel Sanders is too far behind. Yeah, very similar pace there between Sam Laidlow and Lionel Sanders. Only about 0.1 kilometers of an hour in between, so that's virtually nothing. And if that stays the same, then 
that gap between Lionel Sanders and Sam Laidlow at the front of the race won't change. We do have to always add the, add the caveat that those paces can't always be taken as gospel because they might well be taken at slightly different points on the course. So the, the field Close. is getting tighter. <laughs> Yeah, they are. They're coming together, definitely. So we've still got our two leaders who are now a minute and 17 seconds ahead of third place, who is still Mika Nut. But we do have riding through the course of Magnus Ditlev and Sam Long. And I don't think it's going to be too long before they do take those top 10 positions or sneak into the top 10, start rising up through the top 10. And the real question will be if and when they catch Sam Laidlow and Florian Angert. Well, of course, we have seven laps before we get into T2. So there is still a long way to go. Yeah, we're only just over halfway, really, with... Oh, we see a still, pass. Here we go. This is the first time we've seen Florian Anger take to the front. Confidently passes him and will now lead this race from Sam Laidlow. The Germans out in front. You can see them now, all of them slowing down, which is most unusual. You don't normally see the professional males or females slowing down through an H station, but they, they know just how important it is for them to get this hydration in. There's, we know there's only one uh, aid station on the bike. They need to make sure that they get it every single time they go through there. And you can see that these professional men are not only getting hydration in, but they're making sure they're keeping their bodies cool by emptying those entire water bottles all over their bodies, making sure they can cool down as much as possible. Well, Sam Long in third place, keeping his body cool, and he only has two men he has to catch after being almost 35th place out of the water. American Sam Long is chasing laid low in anger. Here comes Sam Long. It is the final lap now going out. So they've got just over, uh, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe about another 17, 18 minutes of, of riding before they get out onto the run. And it is maximal hot out there now, Michael. I know you just came in a few minutes ago. We've been hiding in air conditioning, but it is getting really hot. Yeah, I mean, this is now sort of the warmest part of the day and that uh, concrete has been, you know, just the sun's been beaming on it all day long. So there's heat coming off of the concrete as well. And it's, it's extremely humid still. The sun is still sort of up in the you know, peak part of the day and up in the sky. So, yeah, it's really, really hot out there at this point. Well, Colin was 11th at the uh, Canada Cup. So if he's able to, you know, stay anywhere close to where he's at right now, that'll be a monster breakthrough for him. And we've seen that this year that some athletes who really didn't have the big, you know, resumes have stepped up when you put a million dollars on the line. They come in fresh and hungry and motivated. And they don't care if your name is Sebastian Keenly or what it is. You know, they're, they're looking to take the top of the podium. So with the temperature rising, the heat was well and truly on for Florian Anger as he led out of T2, but with Sam Long hot on his heels and a host of challenges looking to close the gap, it was still very much anyone's race. Sam Long really did leave Lionel Sanders behind today and it's yet to be determined whether Sam Long went a bit hard a bit early as he's doing on this run going hard and early on this run or whether Lionel Sanders has played it a bit smarter maybe and is going to come through as we go through later on into the run because we saw yesterday that this is not over. There's the pass. Sam Long is running up first. Our new leader. Currently leading the PTO US Tour race with 15.8 kilometers to go is the local man, if you like, the American Sam Long. As they come in to complete one of the five laps. That man right there in the white and black suit coming up on Florian Angert is Magnus Ditlev. Right on his heels. He'll look for a, an appropriate place to pass, and he does so. Magnus Ditlev takes Florian Angert 
a changing of positions out on the race course. Also keep in mind, we're getting some information in that Aaron Royal is running very well too. He's taken, overtaken Lionel, he's now in sixth. Well, Sam Long, he is someone who's familiar with the top step of a podium. But this is the big one. This is the US Open. It was only a matter of time before he had his moments and he would really love it to be here today. Running through the intensity of the afternoon sun here in Texas, Colin Chartier is closing down on Sam Long. He has eyes on him. That will be motivation aplenty. If I was Colin Chartier, I think I would have to be saying, I have to try and move past Sam Long because the momentum is with him now. If he moves past him, that's not just a physical maneuver into first place, that's a psychological maneuver into first place. It does all sorts of damage to the person who's been leading nigh on since he left transition. It was very early on on the run he took the lead. So if I was in this position just catching to the lead, I would be trying to blow by. Here we go. And this is it. Here we go, side by side, shoulder to shoulder. Two Americans bringing it in, nearly five kilometers to go. Let's see how this plays out. Champions make adjustments. Let's see what Sam Long does. Will he respond? Well, sport is all about momentum and momentum shifts. We see it in tennis matches all the time. And right now, the momentum is with Colin Chartier. But this is where Sam Long has an opportunity. If he can hold on to Colin Chartier, if he can raise his pace just a tiny bit, because you've got to remember it's taken Colin Chartier well, 13 kilometers to take out those 15, 20 seconds that Sam Long had on him when they came into transition. So it's taken him all that time to get there. If Sam Long can raise his level just a tiny bit, then the momentum shifts again, because then it's Colin Chartier who thinks, I can't get rid of this man. It is strategic warfare between the top three. Both of these men could be the future of medium and long distance triathlon. They're side by side. 24 year old Magnus Dietlev is looking to pass, but he's getting resistance here from Sam Long. But he kicks on. He's made his move. That was a hell of a surge for this late in the race. We are three hours and 15 minutes in, and that was impressive. He shows him a clean set of heels, but this is the big story of the day. The American, Colin Chartier, approaches the finish line. He is roaring already. He slows down to really feel that tape, and he comes across the line. First place for Colin Chartier. Congratulations on an outstanding race. I really can't wait to hear his interview here because I just want to know whether he believed that was possible today. He raced with such composure and confidence the whole day long. Here we can see Magnus Ditlev appears to have really left Sam Long behind. That move was decisive. He put in quite the surge. You can see the pain all over his face, but it's going to be worthwhile because he's going to take home second. It will be an unalloyed delight to cross the finish line for Magnus Ditlev, who had looked at the guys on this race who are towing and he just collapses the other side magnus deep comes in in second place greeted by colin chartier and sam long stumbles over the line himself for third what a race he had today you can't fault the effort there he's given absolutely everything both magnus Ditlev and Sam Long in pieces. It's going to be painful to look back at the last couple of kilometers though for Sam Long. But it really is. we have two Americans on the podium. So pre-race you had a 0.06% chance of winning here today. It's almost a chip in a chair if you like your poker parlance. Did you think that, that you had this in you today or have you stunned even yourself with that performance? No, I, I believed I, I had a chance of winning today. Like, I knew if the fatigue kind of settled down, uh, I was having a hip issue, if it was all good, I knew I could uh, win today. Wow, like, it, it would be possible. I, not that I could, but yeah. Oh, I mean, it was, it was hard, obviously. It was very, very hard. And uh, 
Yeah, I mean, huge congrats to Colin. That was an uh, amazing breakout performance by him. I've, I've always thought he had it in him, and I've always kind of been, oh, what's the, when's that breakout performance going to come? And it's a little bittersweet uh, getting third at the end, but uh, at the end of the day, I did the best I can, and we got two Americans on the podium in, in Dallas. That's, that's incredible, and yo, 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 thanks for all the fans. A quite extraordinary kick from Colin Chartier, earning him a career best victory in the searing Dallas heat. Disappointment for Sam Long, who had to settle for third spot, edged out at the very last by Magnus Ditlev, who continues his impressive run of form. Well, we promised you action-packed drama, and my word, the athletes have delivered and a whole lot more. It is certainly an exciting time, not only for the sport of triathlon, but also for the PTO Tour, which will return next year even bigger and even better. We shall look forward to seeing you then, but from all of the team, it's bye for now.